Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 is visions given in by the Spirit. The Spirit overlaps and intersects and we have to understand the Spirit language. Now, Genesis 2 verse 4 says, it's so important. I want you to, to read this slowly with me. These seven days are the generations of the heavens and the earth. He calls them generations. Can you see it? He calls them generations. The days are generations. When they were created in the day that the Lord made the earth and the heavens. Whoa. The seven days are generations in a day. I want to explain it like this. It's like a seed with the DNA inside. was the creation and inside of the seed was seven days in progressive order in a specific order that forms the DNA of time I want to say it's like the guarantees that the end will be rest now if you only can understand this then you'll know that the book of Revelation, mm -mm, it's not the end. <laughs> it is an end, but it's not the end of the earth and the end of God's purposes. So we clearly have to understand what the end of the world is. Now, um, Hebrews uh, 9 verse 26 says, Christ now in the end of the world came and gave the final sacrifice. So what was that? That was the end of the law world. Christ is the end of the law to all those that believe. So the law was a world. It had a heavenly authority. Come on. The world before the flood, the authority was God himself. The world after the flood, Israel was the authority because Joseph saw this in a vision. <laughs> it, it is so amazing if you understand these times and seasons. He saw that the sun and the moon and the stars bowed before him. And Abraham said, how can you say me and my wife and brothers must bow before you? In other words, the, the world of the law started in Abraham. This is why if you go into the genealogy of Jesus Christ, he says, Jesus, son of David, son of Abraham, son of God. He doesn't take any other seed line. There's a spiritual seed line. Now we have to understand this and we can only understand this if we understand the spirit and the word. This is why you must compare the word with the word. Abram was the beginning of the law world. When um, Noah came out of the flood, God said, I make my covenant with you. Wow, I've heard that before. The covenant was with Abram. But God first made it with Noah. Do you know what Noah did? He became a husbandman and he planted a vineyard and he became drunk. And what did he do? He revealed his nakedness, the same as Adam. <laughs> he revealed his nakedness. So that plan was forsaken. Then God called a man out of <laughs> the Ur of the Chaldees and this man believed. And because he believed, he believed to a point that he believed in hope against hope. Now Christ in us is the hope of glory. So you can't separate these stories and you've, you've got to get it back into Genesis because in Genesis 1 and 2, all these foundations are laid down. And if you understand it, it just takes you to the fullness of what God has for you. And you'll never get lost in the corridors of time. It is very hard so to understand that um, 
people are saved, they are touched by the Spirit, they are really endued with power from on high, but because they do not know the time, everything that happens all of a sudden, <gasps> what is going on? This is the end of the world. Whoa, 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 God has not given us a spirit of fear. The end is determined from the beginning. The end will be rest. What you see around you, is it rest? No, so it's not the end. Very, very, very difficult to understand. Now, the seven days are generations of days. They are generations all in a day of creation. And the day of creation equals a week, spirit language. And God's week has seven days. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If 70 AD was the end of everything and there's nothing coming more, then God's week has only four days. Now that's a problem because four is earthy and God is not going to stuck in the earthy. Seven is four plus three. So there is a definite order and a definite progression. So the first four days in creation, let's look at them. Light, water from water, land from sea and vegetation and light. Then from the water, came creatures and the water and the air was filled and then the land was filled and every came, thing came from the ground and then there was rest. So um, if you look at it here, there's, there's a definite pattern. Light, water, plants, light, water, plants, <laughs> light. Now how can you say um, the six days plants? Well, trees are symbolizing people. So we are a planting of the Lord. I am a tree planted by the rivers. So now if we go back to the generational creational week, you got to read it overlapping. The first day was light. Then the second day waters was separated and the second heavenly realm was formed. Then on the third day, Trees were formed, and on the fourth day, voila, <laughs> there was a third heavenly realm forming, and we get the sun and the moon and the stars and the universe. Now, this is crazy because Earth was there before the universe. Now, science cannot understand it, but he didn't say you understand it with science. You understand this with faith. In other words, God can do what he wants to and he puts it in the way he wants to. And if you also look at it, you will understand that vegetation was first and then the sun. But what about photosynthesis? Well, everything lived of light life. When God said, let there be light, he never turned to darkness. Everything was created in the light realm. So the only time we read about the first time we read about darkness now is when man plunged everything into darkness because when Jesus Christ came to this earth he said the people that sat in darkness now saw a great light so this is what we are we are in a dark realm a fallen creation but voila the light has now been placed right inside of us and all this was embedded in Genesis 2 